Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. Man, bring them out of bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got a lot of things to go over, so let's just get into it. So first up, Bitcoin, 2021 Bitcoin chart, pattern similar to 2013 bull run. And we're going to take a look at a quick overlay into how this could be, even though we've had a massive dip, how there could be a massive rebound just like there was in 2013. So we'll take a look at that. On top of, we're talking about what is a clickbait thumbnail on YouTube. I need to get some uh, opinions from all of you. Also, um, unfortunate news, uh, Crypto Crow, his uh, channel has been terminated. So I want to bring a little bit of light to that situation about what is going on. And two last stories is that Goldman Sachs is actually into the cryptocurrency and digital asset game. And it's not so much about that, but it's about who actually pushed Goldman Sachs to really get into it and how just how bullish this is for Ethereum and why I'm going to talk about why. And lastly, we need to uh, address the elephant in the room, which is uh, Voyager and what I have decided to do moving forward with recommendations. So we'll go over all those things, but first let's take a look at what is going on with the market. So today, a little bit of a dip. I mean, <clears throat> we are up uh, almost 3%, but the market cap is 1.6 trillion, which is lower than 1.71, if my math is correct. So that's never great, but uh, hey, it is what it is. And then uh, if we take a look at just some, some price action, as far as like what is going on, we've got Bitcoin over the last uh, 24 hours, up a percentage. But Ethereum is making a good run. 2,500, Tether, nobody cares, Binance Coin, Cardano, uh, 56, Doge, 4%. Uh, everything's pretty much up, but not by a lot. Uh, but look, a W is a W, and I'll take the W for today. And uh, just real quick, uh, I'm not going to click on the projected range because we actually already did this video, which was uh, we did a, a live crypto pick uh, just an hour ago. And you can watch the whole video, but our two picks for today, which we think are gonna go up pretty massively, are uh, Terra Luna and Avalanche. And you can watch the video, I'll link at the very end, but uh, this is what I think uh, is actually uh, going to be two of the, of the big picks. And we took a look at Alex, he took a look at, look at Sentiment, and CJ took a look at uh, the technicals, and then here we are. And then uh, last, before I move on, I just want to say that uh, I think that we're going to go through uh, a period right now of, besides those two picks we talked about, but just a little bit of uh, sideways action. And uh, for me, this is the most exciting time in crypto, because this is when you when you move sideways, you get the dollar cost average. And I think me personally, I believe that all the money is made right here when things are just boring as hell and nobody really cares. And they're like, ugh. Bitcoin didn't go up 30% yesterday, so who cares? This is the time to put, for me, this is the time to put money in. This is not financial advice, it's a financial opinion, but I think uh, these are the exciting times and only time will tell. So we'll see how that all works out. But uh, let's just jump into today's story because we got a lot of stuff. So this one was interesting because I like to see positive news. I mean, God, Lee, we've got so many um, negative news lately, uh, especially about China and pff, that billionaire Elon just making craziness and uh things that are going in the market which really caused a massive dip so this one was a good article and they compared the 2013 bull run which was massive it was much bigger than 2017 bull run to what's going on today so this is what it is so as a little uh retrospect uh bitcoin's price reached 64,000 per coin but four days ago bitcoin price dropped the lowest price point of 30,000 per unit that's a loss of 53 percent in a month's time and before we go on, just remember that um, these dips, they're normal. They're normal in bull runs. Look at 2017. Now, you have 34%, 40%, 40% big dips, right? And these, they look pretty enormous, or they don't look too bad, actually. But we need to really just kind of delve into there and just see, like, how big these dips were. They were pretty bad back in 2017, and that was the last big bull run. So there's always these... <laughs> these new highs and these new lows for every different bull run. And this one that we just encountered, where we saw 50% in just like a, a very short amount of time, this is a new one even for me. But if you're still here and you made it and you were strong enough to buy those dips, uh, you're way ahead. And that's what I did. And it seems to work out pretty well so far. So we'll see how things go. But imagine 53% in a little less than a month. That's a new one for even the OGs. All right. So it goes on to say that pumpers who assured 
investors Bitcoin would never crash again. Now claim the crash is healthy and necessary to purge the market of excess speculation, said some guy who is irrelevant. And he said, they say China banning Bitcoin as the government's uh, imposed stricter regulations is bullish. Bullish. Denial ain't just a river in Egypt. Good one. So, uh, you know what? In, in all retrospect, uh, he's right. He's right about this first part. I know it's kind of weird for me to say that, but it's true. I always disagree with people who said that uh, we'll never see a Bitcoin at 20K. We'll never see a Bitcoin at 30K. We'll never see a Bitcoin at 40K. Or this one's totally different and it's just going to be... No, it's not. Look, uh, it can do anything. It's cryptocurrency. That's what we're in here for, for the volatility. But there's no other place that you can make uh, these amount of gains. It just does not happen. But uh, on that part, he's right. Second part, I don't think he is right. And China banning Bitcoin. First of all, <laughs> China bans Bitcoin every year. China bans all cryptocurrencies every single year. And it's just getting to be boring. Can we just all agree that China is dead to cryptocurrency and just move on? Who cares? Like I said before, uh, China's got 1.5 billion people. Well, guess what? Uh, we got 5.5 billion in the rest of the world. And they're all hyped about crypto. So let's just stick with that. Let them, let them ace themselves out of everything that uh, is positive as far as crypto, blockchain, and digital assets. They're going to do their digital yuan. They're going to control their people. That's fine. Uh, but for the rest of the world, we're going to move on. And uh, I think it's going to work out okay. So with the shift of even miners uh, capitulating and maybe getting out of China, to me, that's great. I think this is a prime opportunity, prime opportunity for America and the rest of the world to say, you know what, we see how great this new technology is. We're going to embrace it and make something great out of it. And China, you can just stay in the dark ages and do whatever you want to do and not allow your people to do these things. And that's what they want to do. That's what they want to do. This is great. This is a, I see opportunities everywhere. And to me, I think this is the biggest opportunity. And we can get rid of that narrative about China controlling Bitcoin. Now these countries can step up and go, you know what? They don't want to do it. They don't want to have all these, uh, these mining rigs there. <laughs> we'll take over. No problem. And actually, we've had a big uptick in West Texas for those Bitcoin mining operations. So I'm all for it. Let's go, America. Anyhow, and... Uh, this was the big thing. Let me blow this up so you can see what I'm talking about. This is the chart that we saw on April 2013. This was around April or so. And there was a big, remember, this is April 2013 when Bitcoin had come from like 10 bucks, 20 bucks. All the way to 255 and people were losing their minds. Now, I wasn't around at that time. I just read the stories. But imagine going from that and then dropping this much and then just going, it's all over. It's all, it's done. The Bitcoin's, this is 2013. It's going to die. And then it just kind of moves sideways. Then another little dip. Actually, there was a dip and a dip, just like this, like now. Then a little sideways, then another dip. And then it went up massively and it went to over $1,000 in December 2013, which was eight months apart. So if we take a look at that, let me overlay that uh, for again, because this one goes from July 2012, July 2013, that time frame. So if we take a look at that, same thing, July 2020 to, of course, we're only in June right now. But if we overlay that, same type of thing, big, huge up and then a dip, then a little bit of sideways, then another dip. And now here we are, just like this. So do I think it could match up perfectly? Probably not. But uh, I do think there's a lot of room to run. And I think there's a lot of upside to crypto. And that is just uh, my opinion financial opinion and then to finish up uh if bitcoin's 2013 double top behavior repeats we may be set up for a december 2021 or a january 22 final price peak this is the same thing we've been talking about on this channel forever i think just like in 2017 and now just like in 2013 it's going to go all the way to december i may i'm going to be getting out of positions before then because i don't really like to play that game of chicken with all these people who are there and uh i may if I, I dollar cost average in, I'll dollar cost average out. That's all I'll say. And we'll go from there. And then finally, this run feels like 2013. Some of 2013 this year had some rumors from China talking about alleged crypto trade bans and stopping crypto mining. And Pantera, Pantera Capital co-CEO Joey Krug, he said this, for those new to crypto, we're now mid-market cycle. 
We're at the part where China bans Bitcoin three times. It's happened every cycle, 2013, 2017, and 2021. And the tweet itself uh, just goes over all the articles that says, like, this is from 11 September 2017. China bans Bitcoin. <laughs> and they just did it again. They did it like three times this year. So who cares? And that's pretty much it for that article. Um, let me know what you think in the comments section. And again, I think that people say that, you know, we're in a, we're in Bitcoin or crypto winter. I don't think we are right now. I think uh, we're in a good place, but only time will tell. But if we look historically at what happened and not that it's guaranteed to repeat, but I still do think we have a lot of room and a lot of people are showing a lot of interest in cryptocurrencies, digital assets. So that is it for that piece. And then just a, this real quick step, it's, um, I'm always interested in your opinion and people's opinions and just like an aggregate solution. So I just, I put this over on Twitter and if you haven't follow me, if you don't follow me on Twitter, um, I, I'm pretty PG here because it's, it's, it's YouTube, you know, and I don't want to get my channel banned, but on Twitter, it's like whatever goes. So if you want to follow me over there, it's at news asset links in the description. And this is a, a, uh, survey I took out just to see what people think is clickbait. Some people say that I use clickbait. Some people say that it's, uh, it's perfectly fine. Some people say that uh, other YouTubers use clickbait. And I just they came to the conclusion, I'm like, well, first of all, are, are clickbait titles and thumbnails bad? And what really is clickbait? Because some people say clickbait is just something that makes me click. Some people say it's just totally false. So I just want to know your opinion. Go over there to uh, Twitter and then just click on the survey. So I'd like to address that in a bit. Which comes my next point, which is I cannot be very you know, cuss, cussing and, and say ridiculous stuff here on YouTube. I can't, but on Twitter, that's where I want to. Great. Uh, because I don't want to have my channel banned. That's the reason why I have Dan and Dan Clips. I need to bring this to everybody's attention. Crypto Crow, I don't know this guy. I've seen his videos back in the day. I haven't watched him in a while. Seems like a nice enough, you know, person. He's bringing cryptocurrency to everybody. And his channel got banned for whatever reason. And this has happened before. Uh, last year, December, two Decembers ago, actually, people were getting banned left and right. And I find it concerning that because the algorithm, YouTube just says, hey, you're banned. Usually it's a three strikes and you're out. And it looks like his just got taken away like that. What I need to bring this to everybody's attention is I need you to go to Twitter. I need you to tweet to them at YouTube creators, at YouTube, at Team YouTube, and just say, hey, can you do a review quickly on this one before it gets lost in the shuffle of life? And, you know, Crypto Crow doesn't get his uh, his channel back. And I think that would be the biggest travesty. You work pretty hard. Might as well keep it. I mean, I don't think he did anything crazy like, you know, I don't know. Whatever people do to get their channel banned. So I just want to bring it to people's attention. They could help out because who knows? Next could be me or next could be somebody else that you like to watch. And those people are just gone. Or uh, what could really happen is that they just say, you know what? Ban on everybody. Everybody talks about cryptocurrency. You're done. So this is why I upload my videos to theta i upload those to other places because i don't want to lose anything you can follow me in all those different places if you want to but i think the best thing to do is just bring to attention of youtube like hey nothing was wrong we didn't violate any terms and conditions so just do that and that would be that would help uh, me and everybody in this space tremendously so I, I appreciate it and lastly i will say this you know the people who are in my uh description uh, all the people that i recommend when everybody's getting banned, what I did was I reached out to all the YouTubers. And it was a lot. It was over 50 different uh, YouTubers, big guys to small guys. And I said, hey, if this ever happens, I want to bring together a coalition so we could do something like this and support each other as this happened instead of just like a little Twitter thing here, you know? And I laid out what we could do and everything else. Out of all those people, the people that are in my description are the ones that actually answered. And that tells me everything you need to know about people like are you going to rally around are you going to help the people that are in your community they're just going to say eh, whatever i'm i'm good i'm good with me and i'll do me and you do you and that's it um that's just how i saw it and uh not now and if your favorite youtuber isn't there maybe it means i didn't uh, talk to them <laughs> but uh that's why i recommend those people also because i like the content they put out and they're honest and um, i like to watch them that's it so anyhow, if you could do that thing uh, to go over there to YouTube and tweet at Team YouTube, YouTube, YouTube creators, that, that would help out uh, Crow, maybe help him get his channel back. That's it. And that's it for that piece. And um, last two pieces, I just want to say this. I'm not going to go over this article. I'll let you read it. 
What was interesting to me was that Goldman Sachs, first of all, they actually brought their investors together and said that Bitcoin and crypto is not an asset class just a year ago. And now all of a sudden they have their own division for cryptocurrency digital assets. And the interesting part about this whole article, I'll sum the whole thing up, is that high net worth individuals, smart money, were the ones that said, hey, Sachs, uh, you need to get more into cryptocurrency because we want to invest into it, but we don't feel safe enough to get into these exchanges. On top of that, we like Bitcoin and we take a look at Ethereum because of the DeFi, because that's what everybody knew just, they, they know two things, Bitcoin and Ethereum. So even if you don't agree with Ethereum and what's going on in the gas fees, doesn't matter because the people that really don't know, don't know, that means they're just gonna get into Ethereum and go, I hear it's great and I hear it's gonna be awesome, just like .com. So if you're betting against Ethereum, I think maybe it's, uh, uh, for the ones that know, as a long-term play, sure. As a short-term, I think everybody's going to invest in the Bitcoin and Ethereum. That's just how it goes. And you know my feelings on Avalanche and and uh, Cardano and smart contracts and things like that. Uh, I hedge my bet. But that's just what we got. Let me know what you think in the comments section. And let's talk about our last piece. And this was it. Um, Voyager. I stopped recommending them over a month ago. I think about six weeks ago. And the reason was because they went from having very few people, 40 to 60,000 signups to over a million in a very short amount of time because of Wall Street bets and Robinhood and everything that happened there. And they just shifted to Voyager. And a lot of other people did too. And uh, they had growing pains and they needed to step up their game as far as people who would help, customer support. I talked to Steve Ehrlich, the CEO, and he said, look, we got a big task ahead of us but we're getting people trained we're going to do it and i said that's great and gave it about a week and didn't get didn't get better because what can you do in a week and i said steve uh and i talked to him i go i'm not going to recommend you anymore and i hate to say that uh me and steve are friendly i like his i like him i like the whole team i like everything but it's a business and you got to just come out and go look i got to do what's best for my subscribers and if new people are, sh are showing up and uh, they can't get any support doesn't look good and on top of that i'm pushing more people to your platform when you're already overtaxed that's what it was and uh i said i wouldn't do it and during that time i had so many emails my inbox it was 50 percent complaints about voyager 50 percent or more and I worked with Voyager and I worked with those people and I got them in contact and you'll see it on my Twitter accounts. I was like, help these people out, help us out. This is what's going on, education, off we go. Now as time has gone on, they've got a massive more amount of customer service. Are they perfect? No. And uh, if you think that any exchange is perfect, especially with a million plus customers, show me that exchange and I'll talk about them all day long. But here's the long and the short. It's probably the best platform that I use, and I've been using it even throughout the whole problems. When I talk about buying a dip, I'm using Voyager, and it works out great. Now, some people still have problems, and I work with those people. I tweet at Invest Voyager. I tweet at Steve. I get these people that actually work, but it's still a great platform. I believe in the team. I believe in Steve and what he's done before uh, with E-Trade and Lightspeed, and I believe in what he's doing, and uh, I think it's gonna be good, and I still believe this is an investment opinion that the BGX token will go to $30 by the end of the year. $30 by the end of the year. And I lay this out exactly in this tweet. You can read it. I'm not going to read it to you. And uh, I talk about some things that I found out uh, from people uh, from their banks and what's going on behind the scenes, behind, behind the scenes. So as of right now, uh, there is a link in the description. And all the different wallets and exchanges I've ever used are all listed right here. On this exchange of wallet fees spreadsheet. SwiftX, Gemini Pro, Gemini, Uniswap, Coin, blah, 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 blah. Plutus, eToro. I don't recommend it. And I exchanged Voyager from not recommended to highly recommended. And that's where I'm going. Again, wasn't an easy decision to tell Steve and the entire team I can't recommend you guys. And I said, I'm going to give you guys all the time you need. I will not push more people to you to give more problems. Now they've caught up. The amount of emails and requests I get to help with Voyager has reduced by over 95%. And Steve tells me that they have like a, a 1% attrition rate, or not attrition rate, 1% uh, rate of uh, customer service support tickets that are unresolved. So that is where we're at, and that's where we're going forward. All right. So look, if you made it this far, thanks for sticking with me. 
Give me a thumbs up if you found value in the video, consider subscribing. And that's it for today. So I appreciate it uh, greatly. Thanks so much. And I'll see you on the next one.